When Dr. Kent Lowe says, let's roll, it means let's roll. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dan Bornet, and on behalf of Louisiana State University and the LSU Athletic Department, welcome to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in this special practice gym for a historical moment in the history of LSU basketball. For tonight, we honor the all-time leading scorer in Division I college basketball history with a statue in our own basketball plaza of legacy. Of course, we're talking about the late Pete Maravich, known to us and to millions of other fans as Pistol Pete. Peter Press Maravich scored 3,667 points in three seasons from 1968 to 1970 at a time when there was no three-point shot, no shot clock, and despite not being able to play varsity ball as a freshman under then NCAA rules, he finished with an amazing scoring average of 44.2 points a game. 44.2 points a game. He was considered to be one of the greatest creative offensive talents ever and one of the best ball handlers of all time. To this day, nobody in big college basketball has ever done it better. No one has scored more points than the lanky, floppy-socked Tiger Guard. But he did more than put on a show with his scoring, his passing, and his dribbling. He was the show. And on certain fall and winter evenings, his magic turned a cow palace into a shooting gallery for the pistol, Pistol Pete Maravich. Pete Maravich, in all his jazz, in my opinion, one of the great, great gods that ever played the game. He would take the ball and set it behind his back, catch the ball, Amazing about Pete, 44 points per game, career for three straight years in an era with no three-point line. Dale Brown went back and charted all the games that with the current college three-point rule, Maravich would have averaged 13 three-point makes per game, which would have given him a career average of 57 points per game under today's rule. Handled the ball better than anybody, had more tricks than, than anybody, even the glow clouds. And uh, he was a gym rat. Welcome to LSU's Assembly Center from the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. He, Pistol Pete was unbelievable, man. A uh, great player like that, you know, echoes greatness. Um, Bob White has it on the feet. This may be it! I played six to ten hours a day, and I was really a basketball android. That's the only thing I was committed to, Ben. I was totally dedicated and possessed by basketball. There was nothing else in my life. Now let's welcome the Director of Athletics for Louisiana State University, Scott Woodward. Uh, before I start, uh, I want to start uh, with Jason and Josh and tell you guys uh, something personal that's uh, from a kid that grew up in Baton Rouge, uh, literally, uh, and you don't know this, around the corner from your grandparents' house on Chevelle. Uh, I used to stalk uh, their house as a kid waiting for your dad to show up, and it never happened. But it's, it's, it goes further than that. I was one of the lucky 12-year-olds who got to go to one of the few basketball camps your dad put on in New Orleans. And it changed my life. It's, uh, it's one of those things where you saw what love for a, and passion for a sport and for what you do and how you do it. And, and like Coach Brown, who's sitting with you, just that passion reeked. It, it was just amazing. He didn't leave the gym. Most celebrities come to their camp and show up and walk off and leave and, and tell you hello and sign your ball and that's it. 
Your dad was there every second except for one day when your grandfather and he switched camps. He went to North Carolina and did his camp, and, and uh, uh, Coach Maravich came down here and did his camp, and God, do I remember that. It was like defensive day all day, and we wanted to die at night, so it was, it was a fun thing. So that's my little story, and that's how it affected this 12-year-old. Your dad touched us in that special way, and we did, and emulated him like he did it. And I just want to tell you and, and your mother, thank you for sharing him in that special week of my life. Uh, it was really good. Well, thank you all for being here today as we honor Pete Maravich, one of the most iconic figures in the history of basketball. Uh, I also want to thank, uh, besides the Maravich family, uh, for sharing him, I want to thank President Tate and our Board of Supervisors for their continued support for LSU athletics. Um, as you guys know, and as Dan pointed out in the opening, uh, Pete Maravich didn't just change the trajectory of basketball at LSU. He changed the trajectory of basketball across the entire world. And guys, I remember at that camp, you know, his proudest moments were stuff people don't know about. You know, he'd tell us and brag that, hey man, I was the only white guy invited to be on the Harlem Globetrotters. I mean, that was a big deal to him. But he just, he just did these things that were just incredible. And, and it's, it's so incredible. We talk about the prolific scoring uh, that he was a pioneer with without the, uh, the uh, three-point line, the savoir faire that he had, the flair for the game, uh, the imagination, and the love and the passion were just so obvious. And his impact and legacy, uh, uh, like the statue we will unveil here, here today, uh, will forever stand the test of time. And um, with that, I want to thank you all for being here and for you all who support LSU Athletics. And, and again, to thank you guys for really sharing your dad and your husband with us uh, at, at LSU because uh, they were enormous special times. Thank you. Go Tigers. Thank you, Scott. Pete was the third pick of the 1970 NBA draft by the Atlanta Hawks, and in his 10 seasons, he played for the Hawks, the New Orleans and Utah Jazz, and the Boston Celtics. He averaged 24.2 points a game and five plus assists in some 658 career games with four all-star appearances. He was a man ahead of his time when you look at the game today. We'd like to introduce a couple of speakers who will represent the Maravich family this evening. First, please meet a lifelong family friend who was very fortunate to watch Pete's career and who assisted greatly with the statue nomination process. He is a graduate of LSU and is presently an attorney in Covington. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jeff Shane. Jeff. Thank you, Dan. What a cool opportunity. If you're an LSU guy and you have a chance to be a part of something like this, it's really more than you could ever imagine or hope for. As Dan said, I'm Jeff Shane, and how do I get on the podium today? I'm not the athletic director, not the coach. No, Pete didn't break my record. Uh, I happen to be, though, a, a lifelong friend since the Maraviches moved to Covington. And uh, I can't say how much I appreciate Jackie, Jason, Josh, and Jimbo giving me a chance to be a part of this very special day. I would also like to thank LSU, obviously, for this incredible tribute to Pete, uh, the idea of Pete having a statute uh, finally uh, at the Maravich Assembly Center, but to let everyone know and remember his greatness on the court is just an incredible thing and and i would also say as debbie my wife and i walked in today i want to thank lsu for doing this right this afternoon not that lsu doesn't typically do it right but when i look at this facility i look at the decoration i look at the people the way this is put together this is truly first class and uh, once again lsu you've stepped up in a very big way I also have another thank you 
and it's for a very special friend, also a fellow Coventonian, also a guy that played a little basketball at LSU once upon a time, and also sat on the LSU Board of Supervisors and many other organizations for many years. And that's my good friend and our good friend, Stan Jacobs. I recognize Stan because I'll just tell you that from my perspective, without your dedication and leadership, I'm not sure we'd be here today. So thank you very much. As my wife and I drove from Covington this afternoon uh, to come over to Baton Rouge for this great occasion, you know, old guys, we think of old times. And I couldn't help but think of 56 years ago uh, when my high school basketball coach told all of us on a Monday, uh, there's going to be no practice tomorrow. Uh, wear a nice shirt uh, because rather than go to practice, we're going to load you up on the team bus I'm taking you to Baton Rouge because there's a kid named Pete that's playing basketball on the freshman team, and I want everybody to check it out. So needless to say, about 50 Coventonians loading up on an old yellow school bus, no I-12, coming down 190, every red light between here and Covington, but getting into that egg center and having a chance to see Pete do his thing. It's still a vivid memory that I can feel, I can touch, I can smell today. And I guess what's so interesting about it is that my memory is no different than the memories of all of you and people all across the land in terms of the first time they saw Pete. Or maybe they went on a road trip and they saw Pete do something special in Alabama or Tulane or a few other places. So. Tonight, when we unveil the statute, I recognize it's going to evoke a lot of great memories of the past. And it's going to make all of us think of yesteryear. Uh, what do they say now, the back in the day? But one of the things that Jackie, Jason, Josh, and I hope is that when we unveil the statute this evening, that it serve as a stepping stone into the future for LSU basketball. I'm so thankful that Coach McMahon will have an opportunity to take a recruit and his family and stand by all of our statutes, Mr. Pettit, Shaq, and Pete, and tell them about the rich history of LSU basketball and hopefully induce them to want to come to LSU and be a part of our rich basketball history. So last but not least, I've got a fantasy question for all of us to talk about on the ride home tonight. We all know what NIL means, right? Name, image, and likeness. Think of Pete. What kind of NIL deal would Pete get if he were playing today? His name, Pistol Pete, his scoring, his dribbling through the legs, the passes behind the back, yep, those infamous socks, and let's don't forget those black converses. Ladies and gentlemen, I've enjoyed having this opportunity this afternoon and forever LSU. Thank you very much, Jeff. We'd like to introduce a few other very important guests. You're all important here, but we have members of the LSU Board of Supervisors here. Chairman Remy Storns, Remy, stand up. Past Chairman Robert Damp, Jay Blossman, Richard Zerslag, and student member Lizzie Shaw. We all stand up and be recognized. We have the President and the Chief Executive Officer of the Tiger Athletic Foundation, Matt Borman. Matt? <laughs> LSU Head Basketball Coach, Matt McMahon. <laughs> Former Head Basketball Coach who led the Tigers to a Final Four, John Brady. 
Dr. Lori Martin, faculty athletic representative. Dr. Martin, please stand and be recognized. His number hangs from the rafters of the Maravich Center. You knew when he pulled down 31 rebounds in his first game, he was going to be special. Duran Rudy Macklin. And the coach who built a dynasty, a dynasty in LSU gymnastics, Dee Dee Bro. And a coach who continued a dynasty in LSU baseball, Paul Maneri. I'd like to ask the Maravich family to stand and be recognized now. Josh, Jason, and Pete's wife, Jackie, please be recognized. We're going to hear from Jackie in just a few minutes. We'd like to introduce to speak on behalf of the family, two-time Final Four, multiple SEC champion, head coach of the Fighting Tigers, 25 years, the winningest coach in LSU basketball history, the magician from Minot, Dale Brown. Jackie, I want to start with you. Thank you so much for the invitation. Jason and Josh, I remember the first time your mother brought you to the basketball camp. You were like eight and nine years old. She had you by the hands. And you were good athletes. And I, I, looking at you, I thought, I wonder outside of your mother if they know the pressure there is on you two young men to be basketball. There was almost nothing you could do. He was so good that no matter what you did, but you were always graceful in handling. By the way, Jackie, I'm not going to mention Jim Caviezel, who's here with you tonight. That is his name, isn't it, Jim? Okay. Um, also, for you that made this possible, I don't know why some things become so difficult. They're so simple. Um, I've heard the, what, what was going to be done, wasn't going to be done, and uh, one name comes up that really made an impact. Jay Blossman, thank you for what you did. Um, I remember years ago, Buddy Romer was president, or governor. He wanted to be president. <laughs> and I got a call from him. He was new in the office, and he said that uh, he needs my help. And I don't remember if they were all senators. I don't remember if they were all politicians. But he said there's a half a dozen people that are fighting to name this build building Pete Maravich. And I said, why? He said, well, he didn't graduate and he's got these problems. Hold on. I said, give me their names. I knew four of them. So I called them and wasn't trying to show off by what I was doing, but I, told, I spoke from my heart. And I said, Pete Maravich, and I've coached pretty long time, Pete Maravich has done more for LSU basketball, just the publicity of it, and et cetera. Why, why aren't you people doing it? Well, they gave me these self-righteous things, and I said, stop. And I asked one of them in particular, who was really anti, I said, have you ever heard of Oscar Wilde? No. I said, he's an Irish playwright. And he described all 8 billion of us on this earth pretty well, and now you're saying Pete's got problems. If being a canonized saint was a qualification to have coached at LSU, I wouldn't have been your coach. And I said, Oscar Wilde made a statement, and it's insane that this isn't done. The statement is pretty simple. One simple statement describes all 8 billion of us. Every saint has a past, and every sinner as a future. So moving on from there, thank God this was done. I talked to people that grew up with Pete. What does it take? It's real easy to say, hey, the GOAT, the greatest ever, or you get provincial. Tommy Hess said his nine-year-old children, Pete and them went to camp, and it was a strict camp. The lights were off at 10. Soon as the lights went off, 
Pete snuck out of the gym, snuck out of the dorm. He went over to the gym, and they only had emergency lights, and they stayed in there till like 1 o'clock at night shooting. Reminds me of another All-American that did about the same thing. Now, Pete kind of haunted me in a way, Jackie, and I never told you this, but I, he was one, he, there's nobody better, but we're playing at Alabama. Now, we've got a very, very good team. High scoring, we're going we're gonna to be in a national term and have a chance for a Final Four. And Alabama was loaded. Well, we lose, and I get back to the hotel, we lose by one point. And I have a game program, and I pick it up, Alabama beat us 68 or 71 or what have you. And I looked at the highest scoring games in the history. Damn, Pete Maravich scored 69. I had, I had a team that had two NBA players. We only got 68. Then, how do you top Pete? There was a filming crew out in Oregon. And I was doing a lot of fundamental things in basketball. And they wanted me to come and do a film they were going to produce nationally on fundamentals of basketball. Well, I ran into, and for any of you who've got children, and I'm not getting a percentage of this, I ran into a film by Pete Maravich called Homework Basketball. I called the guy back and I said, cross my name off. You don't need me to do this. I said, there's nothing done better than what he did. And if you do have small children, make sure you get it. Homework Basketball. The next thing. What is greatness? He's beyond greatness. No shot clock. No three-point shot. No one, and think of these players we're talking about, no one. Pete Maravich scored 44.2 points a game. You know that. The sky that's second, Austin Carr in Notre Dame, 34 points a game. Sam King, who was coming tonight and isn't feeling well, they didn't have all the stuff they have now. So he went and asked LSU, could I get all your play-by-plays? So he'd see game one, Maravich by 22, Maravich layup, Maravich 28. So he would superimpose what it was. Now, that's if, if he would have known there was a three-point shot, he would have taken more. Sam King told me that Pete Maravich just by what he did, if it would have been at that time, he'd have done more, he'd averaged 52 points a game. Getting near the end, and the end will be better than anything I have, and I didn't write it. I asked Pete to speak to the team. We were playing on a neutral site in Oklahoma City, playing Oklahoma, and he spoke to the team. Without a doubt, and this is not embellished, it is the most sincere, it is the most honest, it was the most fulfilling thing I'd ever seen in my life. And all of them, I, I called two of the players that were there and told me, T -t -t tell me what you thought of that speech. I'm going to speak the other night, t tonight. They told me the greatest speech they've ever seen in their life. One night, Pete came to a game. And it was prior to the game, and I wanted to sit in the locker room and talk to him. I could see, go up and warm up. What am I going to do during warm up? I mean, watch the lights blink. So we're sitting there talking, and, and the speech was phenomenal. And I'm talking about what he said in this speech. He got up and he said, Guys, I see a lot of you guys are all Americans. You're going to be in the same position as me. And he said, As long as we are, we're taught about wealth and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. He said, I was a miserable human being. I was frustrated. I was disillusioned and I was bewildered. He said, do not let all of this society things, he said, change your goal in life. Well, sitting in the dressing room that night, he was a quiet man. He uh, said to me, coach, I got a question to ask you. How in the world, he said, I even thought of committing suicide at one time. He said, how in the world do we get so far off track? I said, boy, I can't give you the exact answer, Pete, but I can give you an answer about a dictionary in 1806. This is what's happened to us. In 1806, the first dictionary ever printed under the word success said fortunate, happy, kind, 
and prosperous. Now, whatever year that was, Pete and I were talking in the restroom, now the dictionary describes success as attainment of wealth, fame, rank, and power. In conclusion, these are not my words. When I say in conclusion, Jim Talbot, are you here tonight? Jim Talbot did our inside LSU basketball for years. Been all over the world with me, been all over the country. We were in New Orleans at a national convention in the Superdome, and we're driving home that night, and he said to me, Dale, he said, how many speeches have I been with you? He said, into the hundreds. And I said, yeah, you've been all over the world. And I said, he said, you know what I like best about your speeches by far? And I said, oh, that weight about that world's heavyweight champion? Nope. The girl that bowed 295 with one arm? Nope. He said, what I like by far the best in your speeches is when you say in conclusion. <laughs> so these words are not mine. These were written, Sam King was coming and he didn't. These are written by Sam King, the sports writer, of 40 years in Baton Rouge, the day before, the day before Pete's funeral. Listen to this. You got, some, you got glasses too, so I'm going to put mine on so I don't screw it up. This is Sam King. In a lifetime, you see many outstanding athletes come and go. And there will be a few superstars, but there's only going to be one Pistol Pete Maravich. His appearance was his biggest betrayal. Droopy socks, floppy hair, gimpy legs, skinny, frail. He looked anything but what he was. He would have been the last selected as a basketball great from a police lineup. Put him on a basketball court, and here's what happens. Quick, determined, intent, shifty, elusive, smooth, oh, so smooth. He was music in motion, the best of Beethoven, Bach, and Mozart. He dribbled to his own beat, an artist at work, the Rembrandt of basketball, imaginative, creative, flamboyant, but above all, a perfectionist. A ball was more than just a leather sphere. It was the brush of an artist, the baton of a conductor, the wand of a magician. A dribble was more than just bouncing a ball like everybody else did. He went behind his back, between his legs. Whether spinning on his finger or yo-yoing through an opponent's legs and back to him with a reverse he is a, in complete control of the game. He mastered the English on basketball, and no one ever will. He made it hum. He made it talk. He made it sing. The pistol did them all. The improbable, the incomprehensible, the impossible. Always but always, forever and ever, the unexpected. His passes, wow. They were a thing of beauty, a work of art. Truly a significant, a sight to behold. What were they bouncing, rolling, blind, behind the back, between the legs? And yes, you know the two together, but regardless, the combination in any order, they were the most amazing, accurate, unbelieving, true feats I've ever seen. Or could he shoot? Again, imagine, creative, flamboyant, right hand, left hand, both hands, you keep waiting for man, is he going to use no hands? And yes, he could kick it in a bounce or bop it off his head. He'd shoot him from anyway. A layup was more than a crip. He faded away, jumped and leaned, spun, pumped, faked, changed hands, hung in the air. He defied Newton's law. Naismith couldn't have believed it. Neither could the fans. No opponents or teammates could stop him. Not even Coach Dad Papa Press, he said, nothing ever surprises me. Not his dribble, not his passing, not his shooting. They were the tools of his trade. The court was for his taking. The spotlight was for the asking. It was showtime with Pistol Pete Maravich. Anytime, anywhere, it was showtime. It's always showtime for the Pistol. And finally, he was a class in his own. Barnum and Bailey didn't have enough rings. The Globetrotters didn't have enough trotters. Nor Houdini even enough tricks. 
always a hit, a showman, a class act. He got encore after encore. The fans couldn't get enough. These were the things he was doing for us. He mesmerized us, spellbound us, hypnotized us. He won him in Gainville. He won him in Lexington. He won him in New Knoxville. He won him in Georgia. He took prisoners. He always had a captive audience. Razzle, dazzle, bounce, pass, bounce, pass. Oh my golly, what he was. He gave us everything. Pistol Pete did it all. There was no comparison to him. Then and now are a zillion light years apart. Tomorrow he'll be buried. Can life be so short? Showtime is over. And it's one of a heck of a show. Pete's gone. Saturday, they will bury the pistol, but they can't cover the memories. They are ours forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jackie. Maravich McLaughlin. Jackie. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. On behalf of the entire Maravich family, we're thankful and excited to be here to celebrate the legacy of my husband, the late Pistol Pete Maravich. I want to start by thanking those who made this possible. Jeff Shane, Scott Woodard, Jay Blossman, Dale Brown, Scott, did I say Scott already? Okay. Uh, LSU, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'd like to thank uh, Brian Hanlon, uh, who I'm sure captured the essence of Pete once we see the statue. Over Pete's lifetime, many have described him as an entertainer, an artist, showman, basketball assassin, wizard, genius of one of a kind. These are just a couple descriptions used by fans, players, and coaches about Pete. Whatever the adjective, they all represent the joy and excitement that Pete provided for the game of basketball. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every time a family member meets someone and they find out Pete was a relative, they immediately smile and have a story about a memory of watching Pete play, um, a memory of one of his many performances on the basketball court, and the thrill of seeing him perform his magic with a basketball. I would say that Pete and his dad, Press, fulfill their dream of wanting to make basketball exciting, original, and an entertaining competition. Seeing fans smile, cheer, and shout showtime inspired Pete to be the court magician that entertained everyone. Um, Pete's ability to be a showman came from his expert skill and knowledge of the game. Hours and hours of practice starting as a young boy allowed Pete to use the ball as an extension of his hand and he could truly manipulate the ball to do anything he wanted. His unassuming look, tall, skinny, floppy hair and socks lighting up the court only made him more intriguing to watch. At LSU, that skill allowed Pete to score 44.2 points per game, be the SEC Player of the Year for three years straight, and in 1970, receive the Naismith AP and Sport News Player of the Year awards. Pete's dedication to his craft was fueled by the love of the game, a tremendous work ethic, and a father who inspired and kept the game fresh, fun, and challenging. When Pete left college and started his professional career, he fostered the same passion and work ethic he applied to basketball, to finding lifelong happiness and fulfillment. We married and we had, were blessed with two wonderful sons and he became a Christian. Pete was blessed with basketball talent, a loving family, and finding a purpose in Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. After his untimely death, we also discovered he had, had received the gift of extended life with the revelation that Pete had a rare heart anomaly that normally causes fatality 
during adolescence. I agree with some who have said that Pete's career and life were truly miracles. How wonderful for us to have been a part of such miracles. Today, as we honor Pete with this beautiful statue, we also honor the other LSU basketball legends, Shaquille O'Neal and Bob Pettit, and the impact that each had on the game in such different eras. We hope that generations to come will be inspired by the stories and accomplishments of these LSU athletes and make their own dreams a reality. As Pete once said, love never fails, character never quits, and with patience and persistence, dreams do come true. Thank you all again for this wonderful honor. It has been a blessing for us to be here with my family at the place that bears Pete's name, the Pete Maravich Assembly Center on the LSU campus. God bless you all. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Jackie. Now we're going to uh, shift venues. We're going to ask everyone.
Corey. Corey. Just leave it. Stop trying. I know you're trying to get all the way back. You can stop. <laughs> as far as you can go. Don't cuss because we're live. Uh, yeah, I do like that. Thanks for the warning. You just took you to the tip. You either ran it in or just laughed about it. You got three in there. No. Let him begin. What did I get in today? What is going off again? That's what I would have. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening again to those of you who are in the practice facility and a special good evening to those of you who have joined us out here tonight for this very special moment in LSU basketball's storied history. Tonight, this Plaza of Legacy showcases the three greatest players in LSU men's basketball history, Bob Pettit, Shaquille O'Neal, and now Pistol Pete Maravich, all legendary figures in the college and professional game, and all three members of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. And if you notice, some work is being done here for more legends to join us in this plaza in the future. But tonight, it's all about the kid who wore number 23, with the floppy socks and the shaggy hair. Both were of another time and another place but Pistol Pete's fabled game is as current as this past season's box scores, 50 plus years later. He is, and he will always be, timeless. Now it's time, Jackie, Jason, and Josh, would you please do the honors and let's unveil this forever memory of the Pistol, Pistol Pete Merritt. been commissioned a replica of the statue, which Athletics Director Scott Woodward would like to present to you and your sons in honor of this occasion.
Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for being with us in this special moment. We asked the friends and family and invited guests to reception back in the practice facility. And you Tiger fans who are here, please feel free to stay and take as many pictures as you like of this and of the other statues before you leave this evening. Thanks very much. Go Tigers.